Hello students, welcome back for the online lectures of the material science and metallurgy. Myself Vivek Parikh taking the lectures on the material science and metallurgy. We were discussing about the heat treatment of the steel and in the previous seven lectures we have discussed the different types of the topics that were the objectives of your heat treatment, time temperature transformation diagram, critical cooling transformation diagram, then we have gone for the bulk methods of the heat treatment that were annealing, normalizing, hardening, tempering. After that we have discussed about the hardenability test that was the Jomini and Quinch test and then we have started the last topic or the last portion of this chapter, vast chapter that it was the surface hardening method and out of that surface hardening method we have discussed the one method that was known as a carburizing method. What we did in the carburizing, we have taken the carbon and we have introduced carbon inside the material. So what has happened? Iron was there in the steel because iron is the major content of the steel. So that iron when react with the carbon, what was formed? It was forming a cementite. Where cementite was formed? The cementite was formed on the surface of the material and as a result what happened? The surface of the material was hardened. Clear? So that was the thing which we have discussed in our earlier lectures but the same concept of making the surface hard we will be continuing in this lecture also means we are left with our four methods out of that four methods that were nitriding cyaniding flame hardening and the last one that is known as an induction hardening so let us start with the second method of the surface hardening that is known as an nitriding method now as the name suggests you will be knowing what do you mean by the nitriding that means introducing nitrogen inside the material what will happen when you insert nitrogen inside the material as discussed the surface of the material will become hard enough. Now what do you mean by this thing that is nitriding involve diffusion of nitrogen where into the products to form the nitride. Clear? Now make sure that your sample is it is not applied on each and every stage the resulting nitride case can be hardened than the carburized steel whatever the hardening we are getting or we are achieving with the help of this carburizing method we get more amount of heating or you can say we get more amount of hardness with the help of this nitriding method this process is only used for the alloy steel in which alloying elements like aluminium chromium and molybdenum that means only applied on the alloy steel where we are having aluminium chromium and molybdenum which is present inside the material clear so only these three types of the steel they are suitable for your nitriding method what you are doing in the nitriding once again heating the component about 500 to 600 degrees celsius so here you can see we don't have to go for the heating up to 900 degrees Celsius. That means up to the austenitic range we are not allowed or we are not going for that thing. So what will happen? Our temperature will be less. So the time taken will also be less and the energy involved will also be less in this surface hardening methods as compared to your bulk hardening method. Through the retort, the ammonia gas is allowed to circulate what we are introducing we are introducing ammonia that is nh3 gas we are inserting at this temperature what will happen ammonia will dissociate you might be knowing about the hibbers process where ammonia get dissociate into nitrogen and the hydrogen so that means your nh3 that is 2 nh3 will decompose into nitrogen and hydrogen gas so this nitrogen we will be using it for our purpose okay so you will be knowing that around 600 degree Haber's process the ammonia will get dissociated so the atomic nitrogen diffuses into steel and combines with the alloying element so your nitrogen will combine with any of this thing chromium molybdenum or you can say aluminium and that thing to form the hard nitride. So what will form if you are taking aluminium and aluminium reacts with nitrogen, aluminium nitride will be formed. Or suppose if you are taking for the molybdenum, molybdenum nitride will be formed and these nitrides they are very much hard in nature. So that's why here we have mentioned that the element, alloying element should be 
aluminum, chromium, and molybdenum should be taken. So, in this method, what we are getting the depth of the nitride case that is from 0.2 to 0.4 mm, and no machining is done after the nitride. Here, what we are getting, we are getting wear and corrosion resistance. Both is offered within the steel with the help of this nitriding method. And how does it happen? Over here, you can see the formula for the ammonia which is dissociated. And this is how these are the samples when it is kept inside the material. Here, the ammonia gas is allowed to flow in this particular sample. And due to this thing at a very high temperature, they will get dissociated. This nitrogen will react with aluminum, which is in a very less amount, and they will form aluminum nitride. Where they will form? They will form on the surface of the material. So, what will happen? Your surface will become very much hard enough. Okay. And up to which depth? You will only get depth up to 0.2 to 0.4, which is enough for the material to resist each and everything. Clear? So, nitriding is done with the help of the ammonia gas. Okay? So, the third method which we will be using that is cyanide. You will be aware about the thing what are the cyanide. It is one of the group of the organic compound which is written as CN. What is this CN? CN that is the cyanide group. And out of this cyanide group, what is dissociated? Carbon and nitrogen we are getting. And as we have taken both this thing before in a carburizing and nitriding method, so we are taking the cyanide for this particular purpose. Similar to carbon nitriding and cyaniding, it involves diffusion of carbon and nitrogen into the surface of the steel. It is also called the carbon nitriding method also. Component is heated up to 800 to 900 degrees Celsius in a molten cyanide bath which contains sodium cyanide, sodium carbonate and sodium chloride. Take a bath in which there is a cyanide product is kept, sodium cyanide is kept and take your sample heat up to 800 to 900 degrees Celsius within a bath. So what will happen after allowing the component in the bath for 15 to 20 minutes, they are quenched in oil or water. So what will happen? Cyanide is normally used for the low carbon state. So here you can see whatever the sample is there this sample first due to the reaction what will happen carbon will start forming the layer around it after that what will happen after that nitrogen will place the layer around it so on a particular specimen what will happen there will be one layer of carbon and nitrogen so there are two types of the layers which are kept on the particular sample and as a result, a perfect surface hardening is done with the help of this cyaniding method. But it is very expensive method. So this method is not much in use. Clear? So this was your cyaniding method where we are using carbon and nitrogen. Diffusion of this carbon and nitrogen on the surface is done with the help of this carbon nitriding method. Clear? Where we can use this method? They are used for some gears, small gears, screws, nut, bolts. So, each and everything we are using, we are doing with the help of this cyaniding method. Next method which is in use that is known as flame hardening. Maximum this flame hardening method is used nowadays. Flame hardening and induction hardening has been replaced by all that three things. So, nowadays we are using this flame hardening method much more because it is very much easy. Clear? How does it happen? Let us see that take a thing means we have to take the two things one two nozzles one nozzle in which there is a flame which is coming out and in the second nozzle what we are using we are taking the water so what will happen your flame will start the heating of the specimen surface and after that rapid cooling of the material has been done with the help of the water nozzle so flame will heat the material and after that it is followed by a water thing. So what will happen? Only surface will be heated and that surface is rapidly cooled with the water. So the surface will be hard enough. Clear? So let us discuss this thing as I give you the overview. The flame hardening involves heating the surface of the steel to 850 degrees Celsius. How? With an oxyacetylene flame. There are three types of the flame which we are producing that is oxyacetylene flame we are using that is c2h2 that is acetylene plus oxygen with the help of this thing we can produce many types of the flame 
that is carburizing flame, oxidizing flame and the neutral flame which we can produce. And after that immediately quench with the surface with the cold water. What does heating does? Heating transform the structure to austenite. As we go in for the 850 degrees Celsius, what will happen? Your surface will be heated up to the austenizing range and then quenching suddenly with water will give you martensite structure. Here you can see that uh, things which is heated and after that here one nozzle will be coming and it will be sprayed on this surface and rapidly cooling is done. Clear? So we are not allowing the heating for a more time. So what will happen? Only surface is heated. The time of the heating is dependent on the hardenability. Means up to which depth you want hardness that is dependent on this thing. So if the heating time is more, the depth of the hardness which we will be getting that will be more. Clear? So this was the method of the flame hardening. That means two nozzles. One for heating purpose, second for the cooling purpose we are using. Clear? So, how does this getting? We are getting the hardness up to 50 to 60 hardness and it is less expensive and why we are using more large and complex shape can be easily hardened with the help of this thing. So, this was the thing where we can use, we can use for the 0.40 to 0.95% low alloy steels. They are very much suitable for this type of the treatment. So, here you can see the different more photographs of this particular method where heating has been done and cooling has been done with the nozzles. Okay. And this is how you can go for the flame hardening method. Let us start with our very last topic or you can say last method that is known as an induction hardening. The same concept which we are using in the induction cooker or you can say the induction furnace, the same thing happens over here. So here you can see the material between the coil is kept. So when you are applying a current from this coil, what will happen? The magnetic field will be generated. So due to this thing, what will happen as the magnetic field is generated, it is going to generate electric current and due to this current, this material will be heated. So this material will be heated due to the impact of your induction thing. So let us discuss how does it happen. Induction hardening involves placing the component within a coil. As I told you, within a coil place a specimen through which very high frequency current is passed. From this coil, very high frequency is passed. So the current in the coil induces eddy current. And due to this, the heat, the surface layer up to austenitic rate. So, due to that eddy current, your specimen will be heated up to the austenizing rate. Then what we are doing, then the surface is immediately quenched with the cold water to transfer austenite to martensite. The principle of induction hardening that is given over here. So, what we are doing, due to the effect of the eddy current, your specimen is heated and as a result, after heating, what we are applying? We are applying or we are quenching with our water. So, what will happen? Immediate quenching we are doing, we are not allowing it for a very long time. So, what will happen? Only surface was heated and that surface was also cooled rapidly and as a result, what we are getting? We are getting surface harder. Here. So, advantages of this induction that is in a flame hardening, there are chances of getting overheated. If you are not moving over here and there, what will happen? The burning effect will be there on the flame hardening, but no such effect will be seen due to this induction hardening method. But induction hardening, it is much more expensive as compared to your flame hardening. Where we can use this induction hardening? Gears, cylinder, connecting rod or any complex shape if you are having that complex shape can be easily surface hardened with the help of this induction hardening method. This is how between the coil you can place the gear and heating of the material can be done. So this are this was the different things like connecting rods and gears and pistons all that thing they are hardened with the help of this induction hardening method. Clear? So, here it ends your unit number 7 that was known as an heat treatment of the steels. And these are the different surface hardening methods which for which the surface are hardened and they are discussed in this lecture. Clear? So, we have discussed in this lecture nitriding, cyaniding, flame hardening and induction hardening. Okay? So, now in the next lectures we will be starting with our next unit and till then, thank you.